Oh, righty then. <laughs> All right, guys, it's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it's time for the Ham Radio Crash Course. Uh, boy, it's been a good week. Uh, it's been a lot of fun for today's topic, man. Getting ready, playing around with APRS again. Felt good. In fact, if you hear that squawking noise in the background, that is APRS. So, all right, we'll wait for everybody to come in as we normally do. I'm thinking about doing this as actually turning it into a podcast, too. I'm going to try and maybe just make the audio for this a podcast as well, and that way people can experience the crash course um, from their phones when they're off. Because there's a lot of podcasters out there, a lot of ham radio podcasters. So very good. People are starting to roll in. Today is going to be a good topic because I know all you have a Baofeng because <laughs> you probably watched my videos and bought one. So this is going to be the next step of how do you connect your phone to your radio, to your Baofeng, and what the effect is there and what you can do with it, right? Primarily APRS. So we're going to cover a little bit about APRS, what it, uh, what it is, what it does, what it is, what it does, what it is, what it does. And uh, yeah, so the, the photo that you're looking at, oh man, you know what? If you're in the chat post, who made the photo? It was on um, the Discord. I'm going back up to it right now. It was Massimo. Massimo on the Discord made this for me. I thought it was very, very funny. So yeah, APRS, all portable. All right, let's, let's switch it over here. So okay, we're looking at um, the 7300 and HF radio. I will be monitoring 14.260 if you want to try and do a QSO with me. But please post in the chat room so that I know I can hop over and see if we can make it. Uh, don't just try right now because I am not paying close attention to it. So with that out of the way. All right. We've got some things to talk about here. Okay. Last week's show was Learning CW. I hope you guys had fun with that. And, well, how I learned CW and a little bit about CW, Morse code, how to learn it, all that good stuff, and why you might want to. I do have a quick go back. I want to make sure I, I really nail home this point. And if I didn't, I apologize. That's that's on me. Um, the whole purpose of the way I learned CW was to not build an internal lookup table, meaning I count a dit, a don, a dit, and then I go, okay, that was a dit, a don, a dit. I know that's an R. Okay, write down R. Now I want to hear dit, da, dit, and then write down R. I don't want a, a, another step of processing, right? So the whole way to learn CW, crank up those words per minute, 15 to 20 words per minute, and that's how you learn. Learn copying 15 to 20 minutes, and don't go below that. Don't ever go below that. And try to avoid looking at anything that has a dit, a da, a dit, or anything. Just listen for it. Hear it and make it become the letter R, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I do have, I do have, of course, the APRS is running in the background right now, and we're obviously going to talk a lot about it. If you happen to want to send me a message, you can totally do that if you're already from, uh, proficient in APRS. It is KI6NAZ-7 today because I am operating off of a handheld. Hello in Colorado. Hello in Springfield, Massachusetts. We got Medic Joe and KE0QHN. Carlos is back. I know you are from down south, Carlos, correct? I think so. Tom Garcia says, great topic. Promise not to call you on an appliance jockey. <laughs> APRS rules. Greetings from Jacksonville, Florida. Wait, you're the one who called me an appliance jockey? <laughs> that guy was mean. Uh, we got hunters in here. And, of course, we've got Zach, who's operating as the admin, and he'll post the Discord link as well because they got a voice chat going that they can uh, talk to all the stuff that I'm saying wrong as I'm saying it. I got a cool QSL card in the mail. I've been doing a lot of FT8, so KB7AK from um, Washington, US. He sent me one. It's very cool. It's a shiny one, too. Very cool. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm getting messages. I think that's what that beat means. But most importantly, we're going to kick this show off right. I've got a beer. And it's a special beer, limited edition, modern times, world game, classic Belgian style blonde. If you were to ask me what my favorite, oh, I messed that up. If you were to ask me what my favorite beer is, it would be a Belgian triple. So I am very excited about this. Very excited. Uh, modern times doesn't often do Belgian, so this is a pretty big deal for me. We all know that my my glass, my seven threes glass, was broken. I had to dip into the, the remaining stock. I've got a crown glass here, which is another uh, kind of uh, esoteric beer from um, Southeast Asia. I've also got a San Miguel glass for any of my Filipino friends that are in the chat. 
San Miguel, very popular in the Philippines. Not a bad drinker. It's like a lager. Look at that. That's thick. Murky. Mmm. I have not had beer in over a month. I take that back. I had like a couple of beers, but it's been over a month total that I haven't been drinking. Whew, that smells like a Belgian. Whew. What's up, Ty? Hello from Port Orchard, Washington. And I have a beer in hand. Excellent. All right, so um, moving forward with Ham Radio today. All right, so that's what we try to do here. We're moving forward with Ham Radio. We're trying to just notch, put a little notch in our belt and keep stepping forward, learn something more, and then we go practice it, right? So your homework for the day is possibly go practice this if you're interested. You know, a lot of you guys got your technician class license from, from watching the Ham Radio Crash Course and other means. Uh, there's no reason that you can't do this, like, very soon. Um, you're going to need an Android phone. That's about the biggest thing. And you're going to need a cable. You can make your own cable or you can buy one. Link's in the description on my Amazon store. It's cheap. It's cheaper than the legit programming cable. And what I'm going to show you what you can do with it is very cool. Um, let's see. Oh, you have until the end of this show to go to the Facebook page, Ham Radio Crash Course, and post your ham shack and tag it hrcc shacks right check the announcement that ethan put up hrcc shacks tag it with that hashtag so that i see it i will refresh when we pick the winner at the end of this uh, show and i will give them uh, a prize of some kind and as we today's the first day of june so the rest of the videos from here on out for june aside from the crash course we're still going to do the normal crash course uh keeping up with the general we're going to go back to the general book but the fourth weekend of this month is field day and i will be live streaming my field day activities so look forward to that and a lot of my standalone videos for the rest of this month are going to be about gear and getting ready for field day so i hope you're excited for that i'm super excited about field day very excited um let's see so yeah with that said dakota lithium battery coupon is still going if you want a portable battery if you're going to go work in the field dakotalithiumbattery.com and you can use the, co the coupon code HoshNasi and you get a discount of some kind. Good batteries. Uh, they are, what would I say? They're like kind of more charge robust than the bio anos and you can, you can run them um, off of solar panels, which is great. And you don't have to use a special charger. Also great. Very, very good about that. You can run it off of just about any um, AC to DC charger. Okay. Discord chat. We will be doing Discord after, as always. All right. We got a lot of stuff out of the way. But today is going to be a really fun topic because I had a lot of fun uh, getting back into APRS. I didn't have it with me. Where is it? So I'm going to talk about this um, as we get further. But this is my, was, was my uh, APRS radio of choice. This is the D2A, uh, D72A made by Kenwood. This is a rather expensive radio, and it came out $500, and I kicked this thing down my driveway uh, within the first week that I owned it, so that was super great. It's a it's an APRS radio. It beacons really well, and it receives beacons really well. But I think this Baofeng in an Android phone is better. Better, guys. Wow. Okay. Um, I will say one more thing before we, we move on. Uh, I was working FT8 uh, last night, and I had somebody work me. It was a W6MEW. And that call sign, I looked him up, that call sign expired in 2007. So uh, I was talking to the guys on Discord, and they said, hey, why don't you report it? I did report it, and the FCC replied to me and said, okay, thank you, um, and that's it. And they'll contact me if we need more. I have the logs. Uh, obviously, it was FT8. All of that's there. So anyway, uh, the link, let's see. Uh, just search for... FCC radio complaint if you're ever interested in complaining about somebody on the radio. I'm not saying you should go out there and, and, and snitch on people, but at the same time, it's part of this service that if there's somebody that's grossly abusing things, you might as well report um, when you see something. So just want to say that moving forward with radio type of thing. Okay, without further ado. Automatic packet reporting system on a Baofeng. This is kind of going to be a general um, what is APRS in the beginning, but... Uh, we will quickly turn it into the options you have available, and uh, it's going to focus on the Baofeng. So, all right, automatic packet reporting system. The history of it, developed in 1982 by Bob Braniga. 
First used to track horses on a 100-mile endurance run. Okay. APRS uh, primarily is on VHF, and the frequency it uses is 144.390. That is the most common frequency. It means it's operating VHF, UHF, means Baofeng, means handheld, means car mobile, means any of that stuff. And what it really does is it uses the GPS, right? The GPS on the radio or a phone or a mobile, and it takes that information, it digitizes it, and it sends it out over RF. It uses the AX.25 um, protocol for sending out frames, as it, they call it, but really it's, it's packets of data. Okay, sorry, I bumped my phone there. How it works. APRS stations are called IPers or IPs, and they transmit packets containing station information. That's that tone you hear in the background, that The thing with APRS is they don't have like an intended destination. They're kind of like just a beacon. They're just blasting out information. Hey, this is my call sign, and here's my lat long, and here's my elevation, and here's how fast I'm going, and here's the direction I'm heading. Right? Those are all things that APRS does. People hook weather stations up to APRS radios, and they pack it, send out packets pertaining to weather information. There's a lot of really good information of people that connect sensors into these radios, and then they transmit the packets. That's a little bit more advanced than a lot of what handhelds do, but handhelds have come a long way, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, digipeters are like analog repeaters. They're big radios that are on top of mountains, and they receive these packets. And what they'll do is they'll uh, amplify them and they'll transmit them out to a larger audience. And then other people will pick up those, those packets, those beacons. <clears throat> now, the digipeter maintains some of these, these packets. And the reason they do that is so if you've got a runaway transmitter that just keeps sending out packets, sending out packets, sending out packets, it doesn't let you. It stops and says, no, 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 we're only going to send out one and then we'll wait. 50 seconds or 30 seconds, some kind of timer set by the digipeter owner. Now, the digipeter just functions like a normal repeater does, like any repeater. Like if you were on an FM repeater and you were just talking to your friends, whatever, functions the same way, right? Same exact thing. But if it has an eye gate connected to it or there's an eye gate nearby or whatever, the eye gate takes those packets and it sends them out onto the internet so you can look at them in a visual representation of that information on something like APRS.FI, okay? I'm going to show you what that looks like really quick. APRS.FI is a Google Maps application. And all these little nodes, see this guy here with this red line? That's the distance he's traveled. He's getting picked up. That's that green line that's shooting up diagonally. These are all the people that have some kind of uh, APRS message going, like this boat. The new Del Mar is pinging out as it's flying along, flying along, as it's motoring along the ocean, um, as it's coming out of Playa del Rey, okay? So it's like a beacon system for when you're out and about doing something, right? I've used it to track my hikes. Um, I know Jerry uses it to track his hikes. A lot of people use it when they're driving, and, and you can see that right here. See this green line that's traveling along the 91 freeway? That's somebody that's that's shooting out packets as they go. And the further you back up, the more busy it gets as people are just going about their business um, using APRS to kind of tweet it out. Because this is just APRS.FI. You can type in any call sign, and you'll see the packets that those people are sending out in a visual representation of where they're at. It's great. It's, it's very, very cool. It's very fun because you're already you're already most of the way there. You already have a VHF UHF radio. You're pretty much close to doing this. Hey, Ethan's in the chat. New admin, Ethan. All right, just catching up on the chat. Trying to got try not to get too far behind. What's up, Biker Bob? Oh, I just I don't know what I did. <laughs> what did I just do? Man, I hit a button. I hit a button and I just where did I end up? Where am I? I'm, oh my goodness, am I in France? <laughs> oh, we're in Vermont. Okay. Yeah, so you get to the point where it's just there's signals everywhere for APRS and it just blotches it out because it's like this is too this is too detailed. So let's get back to Southern California here. So hopefully so far this is making sense. Um yeah, you yeah, perfect. Who said that in the chat? 
Raymond Spark says, it's a common method for tracking dog sled races. Yeah, beautiful. So look at this. You, you can see all these all these nodes, just, just tons of people that are either uh, transmitting from their car or transmitting from their HTs. They sell little dongles, um, a mini APRS, tiny APRS is one, tiny track is another. Um, those Some of those are just beacons. Uh, who is it? Loyal and I on Discord, Zach and I were talking on Discord beforehand. Uh, during Hamcation, they released a huge weather balloon with an APRS beacon, just a beacon, just tweeting out its information. Uh, tweet. Tweet's probably the wrong word. And it's now in like Madagascar, not Madagascar, that's where Ethan's at. Uh, it's somewhere in, in, in Europe, in, in that area. So, and it's just, you know, it's just sending out its beacon. So you can pick these things up all over the place. Now, if you wanted, um, you could hook up a, if that was flying overhead, you think it was coming, you could hook up a little beam, a two meter beam, and you could point it out and you could get it just like you would a satellite, right? It's, it's, it's a satellite of sense, but it's in our atmosphere still. Yeah. I love laser says that was released in Hamvention. Indeed. They also released one for, um, ham, uh, no, I'm sorry. There was one released at Hamcation and then there was another released in Hamvention. So there's multiples and people do this all the time. Carlos, people say me that radio communications are trash. I don't know, man. I don't understand why people get so upset about radios. You'd have to give me some more details. Maybe give me a little bit more context. What was it in regards to? But I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Radio is amazing. Radio is vital. Radio is important. My, my WTF patch is getting messed up. Hawkeye, just checking in. We'll catch video playback later. Yeah, man. I appreciate it's late for some of you guys. Uh, Patrick says, it's in Turkey, I think. Ethan will shoot it down if it goes over Madagascar, America. Uh, watch out. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to let's get back to our slides. Lost them. Okay, so you see the process. Your radio sends out a packet. It gets picked up by a digipeter. It gets amplified and transmitted. The eye gate, which may or may not be connected to the repeater, has connection to the internet. It picks up those packets, puts them on the internet, and then you can use something like APRS.fi to see those packets. Okay. And the packets are in raw form. I'm going to show you what it looks like in raw form in a little bit. Okay, APRS.fi. We just did this. This is just a snapshot of yesterday. Um, this guy was at Disneyland. I, th I think he was, yeah, he was driving. But I have done APRS from Disneyland. It's very difficult. A lot of noise in Disneyland. I don't think I got more than a couple of, uh, couple of blips on the map. Tom, I will mail you my radio if you buy a weather balloon to launch it across the country for us. Um, ooh. Ooh, that's an interesting person. So the problem, okay, so Tom, well, ugh, I want to talk about that. I do want to talk about that. I want to talk about that after the chat. Part of the problem is you need to power it, so you need solar. Uh, that's why a lot of those beacons are the way to go. Um, beacons are, are important because they use low power and they just transmit. A radio, like throwing a bow fang up on there. There's a guy who did that. He hooked up a, a battery and shipped it to himself just to see what he would get. He didn't get a lot of, of, of packets. So I will say it can be finicky. It, it can be finicky. And, and case in point, uh, the D72A is kind of a finicky radio when it came to when it came to APRS. The there's a couple of ways to do APRS. We're gonna cover all the in in one radio options right now. Those are radios that have a GPS device, GPS sensors. It has, in the case of the D72 and the D74, they have TNCs that are fully open. You can connect a computer to it, and it just works as a TNC bridge to you. Um, it'll do the AX20 stuff, and it'll do APRS and send it to your computer. I've had so many headaches trying to make this thing work with a Mac, which is probably my problem. I should have just used a, la a, a Windows laptop and gotten over it. Um, my personal recommendation for this radio is, is don't get it. Even if you can get it used, maybe the battery life is deplorable on this thing. For some reason, uh, the GPS just sucks this thing dry. So what, I mean, that's the point of APRS is to use the GPS. So good radio, but given the cost of it, I was always so paranoid to use it after I kicked it down the driveway. Um, so with that said, with that said, I did buy another radio. Um, I bought this. I bought it today. This is the FT2DR. That's what's squawking right now. That's what's receiving um, APRS. 
this is a, a sweet radio. I'm. It's not a fully open TNC like the D72A or the D74, but it's got that Yesu waterproofness and outdoorsness. So I got this primarily to continue on down my soda path. I uh, I I was not happy with the D72 and using it in soda. So I'm very excited to give this thing a try. This thing has super wide band received too, so that is another reason I got it. So anyway, it's going to sit here, and you will see that later. We can talk about that later. Hopefully that doesn't fall over. Okay, so I mentioned HTs, mentioned the D72. I just showed you the F2TDR. For mobiles, the Yaesu FTM 400 XTR, Kenwood D710GA. I talked about those radios during the mobile radio review. So um, I'll make sure I put that in the cards, but it's also in the Ham Radio Crash Course if you want to see that information. Um, basically, those are mobile radios, 50 watt capable, that have embedded GPS. Pricey, though, not cheap. Cycle Camp, uh, he has a comment. Hoss, Disneyland must have interference from all the audio animatronic stuff going on. Stay away from the Hall of Presidents. Everything. Everything's wired for sound. They got wires everywhere. It, it must. It, it's just an RFI nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to ask me a question, go ahead. Just say, like, Hosh or at Hosh or something like that so I can see it. It'll change the color for me. That's a much easier way to get me. And I and I will stop if you've got a comment on what I'm saying. So, Anyway, so those are all-in-one radios. They're costly. That Yesu uh, is on sale at $3. $370, $370 at Ham Radio Outlet. Um, good radio, but $370 is a lot more expensive than $60 for my BFF8HP or my uh, $25 UB5R. UB5R, $20 to $25. And you can do all this. And in fact, I think maybe better. And I'll explain why. So what's the other way to operate? Well, just like you see, this is literally what you're going to... I'm going to show you this live. Radio to phone to tablet or to computer. So basically what you're doing, and you gotta you got to mess with the settings a bit on the, the Baofeng to do this. Um, you're going to open up the Vox. So the voice, what, what it's basically going to do is you want to tell the radio, when you hear noise, I want you to open up the transmit and I want you to send that noise. That's Vox. Usually you use that with like a throat mic or a, a lapel mic or something, something like that or a headset mic. That's what Vox is for. Well, we're going to use Vox because we're going to connect the radio to our phone. Okay, and the phone is going to send those tones to the radio. Subsequent, we also want to lower the squelch to off or low. Off is preferred, but the Baofangs don't like that. They don't like having uh, squelch off and then also having Vox on. You will never uh, be able to transmit the squelch being off. It will Something the way the radio works it cannot handle squelch being off and then also having you transmit at the same time. So I leave squelch to one and I can transmit no problem. Um, you're going to need an interface cable, which I mentioned, and you can build it. Just look up uh, Baofeng to Android or Baofeng to iPhone or Baofeng to phone or Baofeng to computer interface cable, uh, APRS cable, something like that. Or you can just go on Amazon. You can buy the one that's, that's on my A store. Links in the description. Now, the smart device that you use should have GPS. In my case, uh, that gold Note 5 that's pretty pretty haggard was my wife's phone for like two years. No SIM card in it. It just has Wi-Fi, but um, I'm only using it for the GPS. That's all I'm using it for right now. Okay, so now what? Okay, so why would you use AP? So now we, we've got the concept. We need a transmitter. We need GPRS, and then we need something in between Either the radio does it or phone does it that can can send out messages, beacons, if you will. So team awareness. A lot of people use it for search and rescue. Use it for events, hamcation, hamvention, um, any kind of huge event you go to. How nice would it be to like clip? I, I would love this. Clip something like this to Edison and then, you know, a little beacon. So I can just pull it up and go, ah, there he is. And just have it ping, ping out all the time. Not that I lose my kid, but at the same time, a little bit of insurance. A dog. We heard about sled dogs. It'll beacon out, and you can find it. Now, I looked at APRS. I just did um, high, high level. But you can go down deep, and with phones and, and the Yesu in particular, it'll point in the direction of where that beacon is. Like, you can you can hone in on it and find it. So somebody's already reading, reading ahead. But uh, what are the other things? Tracking, hiking, 
weather balloons. We already mentioned it. Animals. Do not track your lovers. <laughs> do not use this illegally. Okay? So I mentioned that just because we do not. No jilted lovers. You're not going to use APRS to track your jilted lovers. Don't do that. Uh, use it for what <laughs> it's for. A uh, jilted lover. <laughs> you don't know what a jilted lover is? A jilted lover is like like you've been scorned or they broke up with you and you want to follow them. Stalker status. Don't use it to stalk people, okay? I'm not putting this information out for you to stalk people. All right, with that said, let me show you how to stalk people. No, no, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to show you a lie. But before we do that, I want to say thank you to the patrons. Uh, we got a couple new ones. These are our, our producer patrons and, of course, the Brew Crew. Brew Crew is back on and running, guys. Appreciate that. Terry, Michael, Terry, Jason, Ken, Gareth. I believe Gareth is one of the new ones. Jason, Franklin, Henry, Danny, Von Dobbs. Von Dobbs has been around for a long time, like uh, like Michael and Kerry. David and Dennis. Thank you all for the for the support helping to like buy some of this stuff so that we can we can do this and and keep the moving forward radio going so i appreciate it okay with that said let me show you what it looks like okay so what you're looking at right now <laughs> there's a lot going on in this screen i appreciate that um the right here is the baofeng bff8 hp and it has a cable connected to it and that cable is connected to this android phone okay it has a usb connection here for power and it's got its headphone link and its mic cable for connecting to the radio so the baofeng uses the kenwood connector two plugs one for input one for output this cable converts from the baofeng to the one four post connector ground in out left right and then mic um, for the phone so we're looking at the desktop for the Android, um, where the heck is the app? There's the app. So the app you want to download is APRS Droid. Could not be simpler than that. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the settings really quick just so that it makes it very easy for you. You click on the little upper right corner, brings up the menus, go to preferences. The biggest thing you have to set when you are um, when you are using the cable and a real radio, because you can use this on Wi-Fi or you can use this on um, on your cell phone service, whatever. You can use your data plan to do this. I don't really recommend that. I think you should use a radio. I mean, it's it's a radio mode. You should use a radio. Plus, you want this for when you're off grid to begin with. Enrique Sonora is in Enrique Sonora is in chat. Man, I haven't talked to you in a long time. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so. Um, what we want is connection preferences. The connection protocol we're using is audio. So you can do audio, you can do internet, you can do TNC, and a TNC is a physical device, or you can use Kenwood. I don't know what that is. That's probably on the D72. Um, we're using audio, meaning we're feeding it an audio connection. Okay? So from that audio connection, go back up here. Whoop. Or too early for that. Show hub. No, normally this is going to be empty, right? These are all the pings that I've been getting since I turned on the app and the radio. And all you got to do in the lower left-hand corner, you click stop tracking, right? It says APRS services stopped. And you can click stop, uh, start tracking. Now, the app is just going to start receiving in packets then from, from the radio. It's going to receive all these locations of people. And at any time, I could click on any one of these like this. Uh, who's this guy? Uh, K, or sorry, XE2BNC. If I click on that. Oh, hey. Oh, thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. One dollar. Appreciate it. So if I click on his information, I can see all his station history of where he's been and where he's going. Um, if I want to, I could send him a message. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, if it's, if it's internet enabled, you can do things like uh, APRS.FI or you can pull up his QRZ.com so you can see if he's like a legitimate actual operator, which is good to know. Okay, so let me go back. So here's your hub. This is the, the hub of packets that you've received. Well, what if you want to map it? Next to the, the menu on the top, little square, it looks like a map. There's your map. And you can, you, can, you know, two finger swipe to to increase the map and look there's a guy that purple line is somebody that's going looks like along the 405 freeway yep going along the 405 freeway going north 
So that could be a friend, a loved one, whatever, right? So, all right, pretty cool. So far, you're like, all right, it's pretty good. You know, you show me, you know, show me how to track people. All right, you already talked about that. Well, the other thing you can do is message. So these are messages that you can send with this app via the radio. Now, if you're familiar with Baofengs, you know that they normally turn blue and they have a green LED light below the, um, the VFO button when you're receiving. Well, because I turned this with the Vox on, I'm going to send a message out. So who's going to be the lucky one? Um, KA4boy. See, he was sending me messages. I can see them all right there. Said, uh, yeah, a lot of people were thinking I'm going to get spammed, which if you want to send me a message, you can try. So I'm going to say, uh, you're live on the stream. Okay, done. So it just sent it out. And if you noticed it, um, it just turned red as it was beaconing out. Now, my Yesu, which is next to it, he actually also, um, you can't see it now because it's already disappeared, but it notified that it was a there was a beacon sent because I'm using, I have the same call sign connected to both of them. Okay, KI6 and AZ. Yep, there it goes. So it's trying to send out to, mm -hmm. to him again, right? Oh, so he replied. Aw, nice. See? How freaking cool is that? So when those um, those go Is it Gotenna? Yeah. Is it Gotenna? So not too long ago, a company came out with those little dongles, right? Those little crazy Bluetooth dongles that you could connect to your phone via an app, and it allowed you to, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to message with people. And, hey, he said, hello. I'm going to message with everybody and, and, and stay in contact when we're camping. Well, you already have that ability in your mobile, in your HTs and your mobiles and your phone. Your phone was just the missing piece. All they did was take that technology and bundle it into like MERS or FRS. I don't exactly know what frequencies they use. But those things can use less than one watt to do that. We're going to use eight watts. Jo or J another Josh. Josh Wallace. Thank you, buddy. Oh, man. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, anybody who messages me, I'll try and, and get you on there. Who, uh, I, oh, I, who is IGN? Greetings from CPAC. Yeah, no, I talked to IGN. We worked, uh, FTA together, I think, on Discord. Awesome. Very cool. So think about it from the, the applicable use cases of when you go out hiking. I mean, I, we talk about soda a lot. There's a reason Jerry carries, he's got a, a another Yesu, but, um, there's tons of, of good reasons to have something like this. Now, why is possibly using a phone? Oh man, emojis work too. There you go. You see a little face there. So why is this method using the phone better than the the Yesu? Well, um, the screen is nice on this. It's great. Hold on. I don't know this that well though, so I'm not going to dive too much into this. Um, let me go back. Messages. Okay, cool. So, what's going on? Okay, I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but I am getting messages on this radio as well. Now, I can just click on this and I can start typing, but it's not that easy. It's not as intuitive as a cell phone is. So, with the cell phone, you just open it up, open the program, and then good. So, there you go. KN4 uh, MBO. Right there. Hi, stream. Have, uh, have fun, everybody. So we're getting live messages, and it, it's true. It's using, in part, the Internet to do that, right? It's using the Internet to, to transmit some of this information. And I would like to point out that it tries to send at least five times or so before it gives up. So it's gonna, you're going to try and get that message out, and it will, it will try to maintain that connection and get going. In fact, um, in preparation for this video, I wasn't even thinking about it, but... KG6HQD went out to the parking lot and said um, he would try to work me. I said, test, and he said, got it, right? We did that in the, in the matter of minutes. So we're literally texting, and you could be one-to-one -one texting. This could be all simplex. Um, but with the help of the internet, if you're hiking, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. your loved ones could technically – so let's say you had a girlfriend or whatever, and you just get them to get their technician license. Then they can just use the app alone no radio to talk to you via messages 
when you're way out hiking in the hills um, with your with your radio, right? So the radio is going to hit the digipeter. Mm-hmm. Digipeter is going to hit the eye gate. Eye gate hits the internet, and they get the uh, and they get the the message. Beautiful. Someone asks, um, mm-hmm. yes, you can do APRS as a tech. That's exactly one of the points. This all works on VHF, UHF. Um, this all works on VHF, UHF. You can do all of this with your technician class license. Somebody asked, what's the name of the app? It is APRS Droid, okay? APRS Droid, which is this little one in the upper corner above my forehead there, okay? So there's a couple other things that you can see. Um, let me go back. Oh, and of course, I didn't hit this. I should do this now. Okay, so this is the hub, the log. We're tracking. At any time, you can hit the button and send your position out, right? So we've just transmitted our position. I think I mentioned that. But um, that way, you and I can get notification that people are receiving me or people see that it's coming, you know, all the good stuff. So um, another point. Soda, there's a, a membership system, and the membership system is send send the email. You look up uh, Soda APRS on Google, and you can message. If you message a call sign, it will send out a spot for your location that you're about to activate. So if you get somewhere and you can't get cell reception, you can use the APRS radio to say, "Hey, I'm on 20 meters. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm on. Um, I'm going to be here from this time to this time, and oh, hey, I'm on this mountain." Okay, right? Perfect. You, you just sent out a spot and everybody can see it. Now you can work your uh, soda. Think about going out doing soda and you only had your cell phone and there was no cell phone connection, so you can't do your spot. Nobody's going to be able to see you. You'd be out there just calling CQ into the wind, hoping that somebody would, would make a spot for you. A lot of people do, but you got to make that first contact at least. Um, somebody said to send a message to W X B O T. That scares me. Is that O a zero? Send a message to W X bot. Yeah, you're going to have to tell me more about that before I do it. Uh, parks on the air use APRS as well. That's a good point. Now, um, that is a good point. APRS droid is $5 currently. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Josh, you're such a Mac guy. Why are you using uh, APR or Android? Um, that's because the offerings for the Android or for the the iPhone are not very good. There is an app called APRS Pro, which I tried to get to work. It's got a pretty cool interface, but it's a subscription service. So you got to pay like five to ten dollars a month, and it's like a one-time fifty-dollar fee if you want to use it. I just I wasn't about that, particularly for a Baofeng. It's like you've spent twenty five dollars on this thing, and you spend another twenty or fifteen to twenty on the radio or the connection cable. You want to spend a fifty dollars for the app? That's a little bit over the top. Automated weather. I don't know. I want to do it. Uh, Cycle Camp says. Can you use an adapter to plug in the programming cable from the Baofeng? I don't believe so. I don't believe that's the case because there's no, uh, you're not converting serial to analog. This is strictly analog. It, it's just the, the, the analog tones. It's just an FM radio. It's just the in out tones. That's it. There's no, there's nothing else complicated about it. So you need that adapter. Oh man, Ethan just, uh, sent me a message. Hello from Madagascar. Very cool. So yeah, that's how far we can go with this, right? Now, of course, the internet's helped a lot, did a lot of that long haul trucking of the data, but that's how it works. Anything that's cross-linked the internet works great. Oh yeah. Zach says, APRS Droid is free from the guy's website. You don't get auto updates though. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a pretty good app. I would pay the $5 for it just myself, and I did because I I was pretty excited. I was banging my head, and uh, I should mention. <laughs> I didn't mention this up front. I totally should have mentioned this. The whole reason we're doing this uh, this episode is because I had a, a list of show ideas that I, I offered to the patrons, 
and they picked, and this is the one they wanted to see. So this is great. I, I was I was a little bit frustrated in the beginning because I tried to make it work on my iPhone. I was really excited, um, and I just got just couldn't couldn't get it going. And I said, you know what? I've got my wife's old old Note Five. Let me try that, and it just worked right off the bat. Every part of it was was simple and easy, and and very fun. So I I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of using this. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. There's other things you can do if you wanted to get more serious. You could use a computer, a laptop, um, and you could connect. Now, in some cases, it is good to have a radio like this one, right, because this is a TNC. So what you do with this is you connect it to your, your computer, and then if you had a weather station like a rain collector or a wind uh, wind sensor or whatever, you would connect that into your computer. The computer would use software to to digitize packets and send it out to the Kenwood. Or the Kenwood would actually digitize the packets. It would send the tones. Uh, dub, okay, so somebody said WXBot is a weather bot. I don't know what that means. So if I message it, what will it do? What will it do? All right, let me catch up because somebody, I think, asked a question. Uh, Extreme JOS, I know I'm off topic, but I'm still trying to program my Baofeng with Chirp. Oh, no. Uh, but I have the cheap Baofeng USB connection, but I can't get it to work via Mac. On Yeah, buddy. You, in particular, why that, that uh, proper cable exists. There is no other way around it. I've tried to use the counterfeit drivers. I've tried just about everything on the Mac to use the counterfeit or the, the cheap cables. Never got it to work. That's why I use the legit cable only. I apologize. That's, there's, I can't, I can't help you other than save. So figure out how much time, how much your time's worth. <laughs> like figure out how much you pay, you make a, a, an hour and then think to yourself, is it worth for me to spend the next six to 12 hours banging my head against the wall trying to figure out how to make this work or should I just buy the $20 cable? Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Uh, extreme, yeah. I, sorry, man. Extreme says, yeah. Let me check if I can get the the cheap one to work, and then I'll purchase. Yeah, I I was there. I banged my head against the wall for for hours and hours and hours, couldn't get it to work, and I just said, you know what? I'm gonna buy the the more expensive cable, and it'll work on everything. It works on Windows. It works on Mac. It works on Linux. No problem. And I've used it on all of those computers before, so it's the right way to go. Oh, that's funny. Tom says if you message the uh, bot, it modifies the weather. It launches harp and chemtrails. <laughs> uh, yes, I will. So somebody's asking in the chat, will you set up WinLink? WinLink is like email over, I, I believe WinLink does both VHF, UHF, and HF. I'm inclined to do HF just because I've got that 7300, which is just... So nice for doing the digitals. So all them digitals on the uh, the seventy three hundred are just beautiful. Ah, all right. So I'm gonna take your questions. Oh no, you know what? I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget picking a winner of the ham shacks. So let's go back to the web here. I hope you all got it in. Um, I'm gonna refresh this page. Lee, man, with that. Oh, oh, is that a new contender? Okay. So what we're doing here, I appreciate, uh, one, if you have questions about the Baofeng and APRS, post them in the chat. Make sure you hit me with the at. Uh, that's the best way for me to, to see it um, because it's going to get buried a little bit. Reflex. H Reflex says, alternatively, you can just program it manually. It's actually not that hard. You just can't put in a name. Yo, <laughs> programming 125 Baofeng channels to me feels like hell. <laughs> it feels like hell. I will not do that. You can. You can. You absolutely can. With that said, big shout out. Um, I had this thing programmed on APRS and Spark Repeater, the repeater I'm on most of the time, in like two minutes. This thing's so nice to program manually. Mm -hmm. This Yesu, beautiful, beautiful. It's easier than the D72. It's easier than the the, the B, uh, BF8 HP. 
It's easier than my FT60. This radio is easy to program manually. Plus, it has a it has a CF card reader. You can put a uh, a table like a uh, an Excel sheet, and it can just load all the memory locations off of that. That's awesome. So that radio is sweet. I think I'm going to sell my D72. If anybody wants to buy a D72, message me. Ashnasi at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, oh, I Love Lasers sent a message. Let's see if it shows up. Oh, Dom sent me one. Yep. What's up, Dom? Okay. Uh, KC1IEG said, how's Cali? Cali is great. I think it's a – we're sitting at 75 degrees outside right now, Jeff. Beautiful. Okay, all right. Um, I accidentally bought the fake cable. Yeah, dude, I did the same thing. Raymond back. Uh, Raymond, Raymond says I accidentally bought the fake cable at first. Now I think I'll turn it into an APRS cable. Yeah, maybe. Um, do read the. Okay, I do want to say something about the the building a cable. I have done this. I have built a cable. The proper way to do this involves um, adding some resistors to it. I don't remember off the top of my head, so make sure that you go look at real plans. I just mm-hmm. bodged it. Oh, win link. KC1, IEG. Wow. All right. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's been sending me stuff. From the lowly mm-hmm. one land, CQ. Nice stream you got going. How do I win link? I don't know. Yet. You hear that beeping? That's the Yesu picking up that I'm sending a message out. Pretty cool. Extremely JOS. I'm also glad you found my channel. I am very excited about that. Um, Extreme JOS. Hey, buddy. With that said, he says, I'm trying to read up so I can get my license so I can actually start talking to people. Well, I also did something called get your technician license. If you go up to the top, uh, go to my channel, go back up there. And the playlist, I think it's the second or third playlist. I did a six part series on going through the Gordon West book and then running a lot of practice tests and we have a ton of people that passed their technician license with flying colors, and we have a Facebook group. It's called the Ham Radio Crash Course. And actually, let's get back on topic. Let's get back on target here, and let's pick a, a shack. So uh, at the end of April, I think we started talking about a ham shack contest. And so we said everybody use the hashtag HRC, uh, HRCC Shacks, Ham Radio Crash Course Shacks. And then we'll pick one, and we'll just pick a winner. At the time, I didn't really have – I I had delusions of grandeur that I would I would give something away. So um, I'm going to pick well, – I'm going to pick uh, a winner right now. And then that person, if they're in the chat, they can say it. But um, I'm going to let them pick between an Energizer rechargeable – it's an actual recharging unit. It plugs into the wall. So it will go – from AAA all the way down to D batteries for charging. And it'll do 9 volts too, which is nice. If You ever, you know how rare it is to find a rechargeable 9 volt these days? Those are really, I really like rechargeable 9 volts because they're expensive. Anyway, you pick from that or a Kearsaw Shuffle uh, first gen. Second gen, garbage. First gen though is sweet. I only have one of these left. Two of them went to people who made contacts with me um, on live streams. This radio, or this radio. This radio, you just stick it in the side of your head, and then you can re- hear all the noises. Um, it's nice because it has a pry bar on one end and a, and a cap lifter, what we call bottle openers, back before knives started putting them on. And it's got a nice little little blade on it. it got a cool little distress finish to it. Anyway, you can pick that or the other. It's up to you. Whoever wins this, that's what it's going to be. Uh, Tom, I hope your new radio is in your Amazon store. It is the next HTM buying this summer. It seems to be a replacement for the... Yeah, so it's not yet. It's not. But if you go to my Amazon store below, if you want to, um, and if you just search for the uh, FT2D on that search bar, it'll show up. So if you just go to the link I provide, if you just go... And you use that search bar to look for anything. It's it. Amazon treats it like I brought you there. So I get a little taste of the action. No added expense to you guys. It's just like, hey, I went there because Josh said, go here if you're buying stuff. Support the channel kind of things. You get it. 
yeah, radio knife would be interesting. Scary, but interesting. Okay, so here we go. Tom, 37 uh, minutes ago, posted his shack. I like that he did not remove the goo off. He just sits there and, and has the goo off sitting. So I'm going to clown some people a little bit as we do this. I'm back on the beer. I haven't drank in a month, so it, it's, it hit me a little. So somebody's going to get clowned. Everybody's going to get clowned. Okay, it looks like we got, is that a Kenwood or an Icom? And I think he has my Icom 2730A. Great VHF, UHF radio. So he's got a proper HF. He's got a proper VHF mobile using it as a base station connected to a PC. And then he's got that Baofeng right next to it and the prominently displayed goo off. I love that. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, now, point extra points for, for me in his picture of his ham shack. Uh, Dan Sparks post him holding what looks like a BFF 8 HP before the <laughs> gotta run what you brung <laughs> run what you brung okay I like it <laughs> that's pretty good okay Lee brought the uh, Lee brought the surprise entry so Lee Lee got Lee got like all of my my stuff going on one thing although I can't figure out what's in the back left corner I see a propane tank but I can't figure out what's next to the propane tank so Lee has two Baofangs, what looks like ear protection, a laptop looking at the ham radio crash course, and then a big knife and a Glock. <laughs> Very good. Extra points for that, too. All right. Uh, six hours ago. See, this is this is a nice shack right here. This is, this is some good stuff. This is somebody's garage. He probably built that table. Looks like hand-bent metal, and it's just metal. Probably welded legs on that bad boy. And I can't. So I'd be curious to know if those post-its were reloading recipes, if they were the recipes, that, the grains that he's using for uh, for whatever he's running. And then he's got uh, a radio. I can't. I don't know what that radio is, but it looks nice. And he's got it connected to a power supply, and it looks like an LDG, an LDG tuner and a couple of Baofeng. I really like that shack. That. That's a that's a person who understands my aesthetics. He's got blue in the background. I'll show you. This is uh my office wall here. Oh, that color's not right at all. Oh, because the keying's on. Ugh. Anyway, pretty similar. Pretty similar uh, looks aesthetically to me. So I like that. I like the old keeping it simple too. William posted one, just hanging out there. <laughs> next to his wife annoying the crap out of her like yeah buddy that's basically me with ham radio is annoying the crap out of my wife all right let me go back here uh da, 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 da. i think i got a message here oh yeah oh i just spammed him sorry kc1 ieg might buy that ft2dr awesome this is a good one. This one this one gets a lot of points, and I'll, I'll walk through it. I'll walk through why I like this one so much. So, um, this shack has HTs, VHF, UHF mobiles, HF, CB, an external speaker for whatever he's got connected into it, and what looks like a signal link of some kind. And then an assorted amount of tools and a soldering iron. That is a multi-purpose unit. That is a multi-purpose unit where he is doing, he or she, he or she, or they, they, they are doing a myriad of things. I, that to me reminds me of my stuff. Not, not to tip my hat a little bit. And I know there's a light in there somewhere because he's got it all, he's got two lights. And a map in the background. It looks like he's tagged on it too. So this is this is a this is a station that gets worked. I know a lot of stuff's going down on this station. And this this is just naughty. This is the naughty ham shack. I go to sleep with all these Baofangs. So I see two UV five R's. It looks like, and then uh, is that a BFF eight? Okay. I, I, I like the uh has different uh different antennas there, not just the standard rubber duckies. Okay. 
This one, I I like this one for multiple reasons, but it also frightened me a little bit. So let's see if uh, I'll, I'll, well, you're going to see the comments, but I think that's a Zygu um, HF radio that he's got connected to that. I think it's a tuner below it. Got a Baofeng. Looks like the Baofeng's connected to a, an external antenna, which is cool. But there's the Barba side, which I thought was interesting. But then I ask, and it's a shared space. So who's ever in there with him um, or her is also probably cutting hair or doing something like that. Also, two lollipop mics. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. Those are two lollipop squeeze mics that are sitting there. That was a cool one. A little eerie with the lighting. I, it's good. It's good, though. Okay, load. Come on. Uh-oh. We got a lot, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get through all of them in a timely manner here. And once we're done, of course, we're, we're still going to have the Discord chat after the fact, so you're all welcomed over there as well. Zach will post uh, the link, I'm sure. Oh, buddy, what is the deal? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, next one. So this one is looks like two CBs and one HF semi mobile. I think it's like a twenty five watt, and then a and then a Baofeng. Also good. Also good use of space. He's got that engineering desk. Really got everything crammed on there with all the mics. I like that. I like it very much. All right. This is a good uh, just. Getting her done. I think that looks like a... That's an interesting hand mic. I'm not familiar with that hand mic. Hunter, take it easy, man. See ya. We have 97 people watching right now. I just looked. That's I haven't looked since we started. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. If I could ask you to do one thing, give me the thumbs up. It does actually help with the live streams particularly. and It shows YouTube that people are engaged and they like the content so i would appreciate that thank you kindly all right so there there's extra so a couple of things uh there's tim God, tim's having some trouble with his local i mean i i don't know what it's like to live in an area where there's only one repeater or a couple repeaters tim's having some issues where there's only one repeater in his area and it sounds like some people are jerks there so tim i'm sorry that sucks for you but I, uh, that's Jerry's, the same, uh, HT that Jerry uses. Jerry KG6 HTD. He's got a nice little, uh, Heineken sit next to it. He's got the GPS module connected to the, the hand mic. That radio has this little weird growth that you can attach to it to put the, the GPS on. Weird radio when that came out. Very military, utilitarian looking. Cool radio, but, but kind of weird. Like it though. So I don't know what a pyramid is. Is that a power? Yeah, it's a power supply. 12 volt power supply. Okay, man after my own heart. It, I think that's the first FT60 I've seen. And then he's got the, the tw I don't know. I don't get, I don't hate on radio, but I don't get why people are buying so many of those little 25 watt uh, mobile jobbers. Are they even 25 watt? I think they are. Um, and then you got the Baofeng BFF 8 HP. I uh, extra points for having your mobile radio antenna just right by you. I think that slammed on like a filing cabinet or something like that. So that's good. Radiating you and the entire family. Todd S., what's up from Utah? That was Stephen Vale. Good stuff. I like it. Well, loading more results. I don't know what's going on right now. It's possibly what's going on is that I have multiple cameras all putting a bunch of data into the computer that I'm also doing this on, and then I'm <laughs> killing it because it's a 2011 iMac. In case you didn't know, all of my streaming is done on a 2011 iMac, and I am killing it. Hmm. Let's uh, While it figures out what it's going to do, we'll jump in the chat. We'll also check the messages. KN4HDP checking in. Greetings from Kansas. What's up? Hey, uh, is that Elias? Elias Arif? Morning from Malaysia. Right on. I actually have a couple people um, that are following the channel and, and active from Malaysia. That's right on. 
David says, going to be experimenting with putting up an attic dipole tomorrow. Right on. Um, so the nice thing about an attic dipole is you don't have to worry about the weathering, the weatherproofing. So that's good. What are you trying to do? I'm, I'm guessing 20, 20 meters, maybe 40. Oh, it, oh, KY, of course it's Kentucky. Sorry, you're right. Of course you're right, you live there. KY is Kentucky. I apologize. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're back on. All right, I, uh, I, so that's a TYT 9800, I'm pretty sure. Okay, why I like this one. This is literally making it happen. Cardboard box with a laptop on it with a plastic bin with the radio on that and then a piece of paper for, for jotting down notes or, or uh, call signs. Awesome. Awesome. Way to make it work. That was extra points for that, for sure. This one's just sweet because I want to be there right now. Who's the one guy who brought his uh, bow fang to the beach? N. Shane Martin is the guy. <laughs> Pretty cool, though. Pretty cool. That does not look like a beach where people are going in the water anyway, so you're just hanging out. And, by the way, if you're into HF and you have a chance to go maybe to a beach or something like that, look into antennas that can use uh, the sand and salt water as a ground plane. You will do very well with a lot of... Um, usage of the water as a ground plane you'll do very well so keep that in mind all right let me adjust this a little bit i like it though uh car ham this is like the first car ham shack pretty cool i believe i believe he punched a hole patrick i don't know if you're in the chat but i believe you punched a hole in your roof to put that antenna up there and if you did kudos that may be a mag mount though a small mag mount and then there's that mobile again. Looks like he's got a CB on his left on his leg there. And there's that 25 watt mobile. Okay, somebody in the chat, somebody in the chat, say at Hosh and and tell me why those mobiles are so popular. It's a 25 watt. It's basically a Baofeng mobile radio. There's so many of them popping up. It's basically become the new Baofeng almost. And I don't understand. No hate. I just don't understand. Oh, and Shane Martin, he's in the chat. He said, that was the day before the storm hit North Florida. Wow. Yeah, it's very interesting. Very cool. Okay, so um, I do have another beer. Wait, should I? Oh, I finished that other one. Oh, I finished the other one. I have a Tart of Darkness by Tarot. Now we're getting to the really wild stuff. I'm going to use the knife that I make if white over my beer. So you get it. It's a pre-test unit. So that's one problem with this knife is that for opening a beer, you got to be right on one of the little lips, and some caps don't like it. Well, this knife's defective that I was going to give away. Can't even open a beer. <laughs> there we go. We're getting somewhere. What's the deal? This is why you go with that uh, butterfly knife. Okay, we're going. Sorry. Where did it go? Here we go. Oh, there we go. See, there's a big difference between like a flat blade bottle opener and a little little bottle opener. Still works. In a pinch, it'll work, but I'm not in a pinch. So I got people responding. 25-watt uh, mobile you can get for about... Okay, so Zach, thank you. Zach, the, the moderator great moderator um basically saying that the reason why they're so popular is that you get 25 watts for about 60 dollars so that's yeah that makes sense that makes sense probably because the size somebody said there is one that is 70 or 75 watts on two meter made by the i think it's tyt meant 9800 maybe i was wrong zach pretty much covered why i have it <laughs> so interesting point I would like to say, oops, sorry about that. I would like to say that uh, when that radio came out and Zach mentioned it, it started out at about sixty dollars, but because it got so popular, that price is inflated up over eighty dollars. There was uh, Patrick said he picked one up for eighty nine. I believe it's crested the hundred dollar mark. 
very popular on on Amazon right now. It's yeah, it, it's not cheap though. So anyway, here's the tart of darkness. Literally, I can black out the camera with that beer. Look at that. Oh, sorry, I hit the camera. I shouldn't hit the camera. Just block it out. Woo! Oh, what is that? I'm putting the trash too fast. That is a stout, uh, sour stout aged in oak barrels with black currants added. Woo! Mama. Okay. We need to pick a winner here because I think I want to head to the Discord. I like this one. I remember seeing this one. This is obviously somebody's RV. Really cool. Got his power all like squared away. Got a nice little bow thing sitting there. Got some extra points for that one. Oh, he had a backup too. He's working. Chirp. And he, ah, he's got a, okay. Nope. Sorry. Oh no, it's Lee. It's Lee again. Is it Lee? Wait, it's, so Lee's got the vapes and he's got the Glocks and he's on a, wait, I don't know what's going on. Was that a reply? Oh, Lee was replying to the first one. Okay. So all is right. I'm just making sure I understand. This is a cool one. I like this little uh, end table that they set up. I believe that's a TYT 9800. And a Fire Rock beer by Kona Brewing. Very cool. Ooh, that is a tart beer. I like the Oh, so this is Ethan. Ethan Ethan knows lighting. So for those uh, that didn't catch it, I sent Ethan a uh, ham it up. Was it ham it up? Uh, up converter. So he's able to take his little dongle because he's only got a, a received dongle out in Madagascar, and he can hook that up converter to it, and he can pick up HF. So very cool. I'm glad that's working out for you. The lighting was beautiful on that on that picture. Okay. This is also a picture with decent lighting. I like that as well. Nice outdoor picture. Oh, yeah. Dan has a really nice antenna farm. And I think... Let me actually go back in here. Does he have a second? No, he doesn't. Aaron picked up the 2017 deal book. That thing went for $15. Or was it 7 it was cheap. 2017 book, they liquidated them on Amazon because they shot back up when the 2018 came out. Great book. Another picture. The lighting's a little off here, but pretty good. Ah, and there, this is the one I was looking for. So that previous picture, this is Dan's antenna farm, guys. Sm holy smokes, dude. That's awesome. That is a sweet antenna array. We have 111 people watching right now. I just checked again. Holy smokes, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. So, Dan, you definitely get points for having probably the best um, antenna farm in the Ham Radio Crash Course for sure. Okay, so that's it. I think I know, I know my winner. I know my winner. And I'm going to go back up here. You probably all know what it is, too. I, I probably spent too much time talking about. Yeah, it's it's Aaron. It's Aaron Bowser. Or Bowser? Is it Bowser? Are you Bowser? Are you trying to always, like, capture Princess Peach? I just, I don't know what it is. It just seems so functional. It seems like such a functional space, and they're just always tinkering. I see the, the, the handles for needle-nose pliers and cutters. I see the power supply that they probably made. It looks like they made it anyway. I, I'm guessing it's a power supply. I, I'm giving it to Aaron, so uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post it right now. Uh, you win the June, ham radio crash course shack. Oh, I can't even spell. Good. Shack's contest. And let me, you know, fix Gene. And please. Or I'll, I'll just message him. I'll, anyway, we'll leave it at that. And I need to message him. Where is my paper? Here we go. Need to make a note to message Aaron to let him pick what he wants. Aaron. 
Of course, I'm going to look at the chat right now, and he's going to be right there. I want the knife. I want the knife. Oh, you know what? A couple things I didn't forget. or No, I did forget. A couple of things I forgot that I need to catch up on. So I posted the uh, newsletter. The newsletter out, went out like an hour before the chat started. So for those of you that are following on, um, you know, they're, they're patrons of mine, it's live now. So make sure you check that out. Um, the, the IG went to sleep there. There we go. It's back on. Is anybody out there? Nobody's out there. Okay, let's check the chat room before we call it a day here. Well, we got a lot of people talking in the chat. That's awesome. I'm super glad we got so many people in today. I hope this was helpful to people. And for those that are watching it after the fact, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. Hopefully, a lot of the questions you wanted to know, people ask. We've got a very active group here um, of commenters today, so. Hopefully, I um, I got the questions answered. Very good. All out of bubble gum is a good name. I agree, Zach. I agree. Oh, ice bomb. Yeah, that power supply is a thirty amp, twelve volt one. You can get on Amazon for like twenty five bucks. Okay, that's not. Aaron is not ice bomb. David Hawley asks. Do you need to get a planning permit for a tower like that, or does it depend on the municipality? It almost always depends on the municipality. Where a permit is needed, where it's not needed, is always um, in contention. With that said, most cities and most people hate ham radio antennas. Hate them. So just assume you need a permit. Okay, now would be the time to ask any questions before we close it up today. I hope this was super helpful. I hope this was useful. I was, uh, when, I, when I first got my technician license, I got super excited about APRS. And that was 10 years ago, you know? And it just wasn't where it is now. And so I kind of got discouraged and I kind of walked away from it. And I was unhappy. And now it's come such a long, like, far away with the apps on the phone and, and that Yaesu, the, FT, uh, the FT2D, much better radio to, to operate on the radio than the D72. So I'm, I'm super, like, excited on, on where it's at right now. The, the downside, and, and I forgot to mention this, there are not a lot of standalone APRS radios anymore. The FT2DR and the D74 that are currently being produced. I'm not talking about old stock or radios that are about to fall off. They're the last ones, really. There's not a lot of other HTs that are doing it. The ICOMs are D-Star, and I think they have a way to like convert it to APRS or do some kind of funky chicken stuff to it. But that's not, as a purist, I'm saying like that's not legitimately just built to do APRS. So... I'm uh, I don't know how I feel about APRS, right? Because in some point the 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 community's moving away, or maybe they're all just saying no, we'll just do it on our phone. We don't need an all-in-one solution to do it, which might be the answer. Which and it could be the better answer because I mean, look at this. We're I've gotten a ton of messages. Um, yeah, so right here, KC1 IEG says, where did I get the ARRL pin? Well, it's on my uh, uh, Ham Radio Crash Course Amazon store. If you go to my Amazon store, it's right there. I believe my WTF pin is there too for NASA. Yeah, NASA WTF pin. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, David said, oh, man, that's tart. Oh, I can feel it all back here. Uh, that NASA pin, by the way, I'm an aerospace major. Haven't seen it before. What's the story with what the fuck are you dissing on NASA with that? Uh, no. So I view this in a couple of ways. Um, you guys don't really know much about my background, but uh, I've I've worked in satellite communication for for uh, many many years, and it's not for entertainment purposes. And the the NASA stuff. I think I take the what the what the f as a kind of a how NASA's going. 
NASA has largely decided that they're less interested in putting people into space and they're more interested in doing, you know, drones on other planets and satellite work, which is fine. Um, and that's not really NASA's decision. I understand that's kind of the government's decision and, and funding gets cut. So I'm of two minds because I understand why we put up more satellites. I understand why we send automated devices to different planets in space. But at the same time, there's nothing as cool as like putting people into space, right? With that said, I'm super excited about, what is it, uh, the James Webb the Space Telescope. Super, super excited about that. Very, like you could not, you could, I, the concept, it's literally a transformer. It is literally a transformer. It is going to go in space in a tube and it's going to unfold itself. Five layers of heat protective shielding that it has to unfurl like an origami, you know, whatever. And then assemble an 18 parabolic reflector array of mirrors. Super awesome. Could not be more excited about that. But that is for another discussion. Guys, if you'd like to keep the discussion going, I'm going to head over to Discord right now. Uh, Zach, why don't you hit him with that link one more time? And I think we're going to call it a day. Made sure I got everybody. Yeah, so I, I picked Aaron's the winner. Hit the questions. Okay, so make sure you hit up Ham Radio Crash Course on Facebook. We've got the Discord that Zach just put the links up. Um, if you want to check out Patreon, Patreon, I, I just can I just confuse uh, Patreon with Padron, which is a cigar. Uh, Patreon. If you're interested in the Patreon, I do a monthly newsletter. It's a dollar to get involved with that. And the newsletter just went out today. So if you join, you'll get the newsletter. You can check it out. Oh, and I think the uh, app just crashed for the Android. Did it crash? Yeah, it did. <laughs> anyway, okay, guys, uh, take it easy. And I'm heading over to Discord. We'll see you later.